Hi everyone, um, my name is Heather Whitney and I currently work with Toluca. Um, today I'm going to be going through a really awesome product with you guys, um, so I hope that you pop in and get started um, with me and will hang out with me while I go through this. Um, just a little bit about myself, I'm from Texas, I've been working with Toluca for a couple of years. Um, on product development. I do some stuff on social media and a variety of other things um, and I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. So um, today I just want to take some time to talk to you guys about um, a really awesome resource that I hope you will consider using. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of going to go through the resource, talk a little bit about it and what's included and then I'm going to take you through my process of what I use with my third graders and how I um, make sure that they um, are getting the best experience with this and how it helps me use data to kind of guide my instruction. Um, so we're gonna be talking about the diagnostic math assessments. Um, I'm gonna be using the third grade one to go through just cause that's what I teach. Um, they are available in first grade through fifth grade. Um, they do cover all of the common core standards. There are a couple that are combined um, depending on what the standard is um, and all of that information you can find um, in the product overview on uh, the description. So uh, that's really nice. There's also a couple of pages in here that are blank. Um, so if you have the need to create your own type of questions, you have the ability to do that. Um, and the template is in there for you. So I'm just gonna kind of go through this um, and then I will we'll go into my actual example. Um, on the first page of this document, it kind of goes through how the questions are set up and it has all the instructions for implementation. Um, Again, I, I strongly agree with everything that's in here, um, but we'll talk through that when we get to the actual question. On the second page, it talks through how Toluca suggests that you group the students. Um, you know your class and you know your kids. So, you know, this is a really good guide for you and kind of her um, thought process on how these assessments can be used. Um, but it's really up to you and what's going to fit best with your schedule. Um, she also has some suggestions for some other products that you could use um, for your kids that are on level really low or really high. Um, I've worked on a lot of those interactive math slides and I think they're super awesome and a great thing to supplement. Um, so that's an option. So here's the little template. Um, it's blank. You can go through and actually type the question directly on here or print out and write if you're like me and sometimes it's easier to print. Um, so totally up for you on that. So I'm just going to talk you through um, MBT.1, which is um, just a place value standard. So at the top, it has all the directions for the kiddos. Um, there's a pre-assessment page, a post-assessment page, and then your answer key. Um, you're always going to want to start by giving all of your kids the pre-assessment and tell them to do all of the questions. Um, even if you know that they are not capable, it's a good data point for you to have and good for you to kind of see where they're at. Um, so the first question is always going to be your most basic um, of all of those three questions. So it's going to be the most simple that the standard can possibly be. Your second question is going to go into it a little bit more in depth. And then the third question is going to be more of an application of the standard. Um, at the top, it does list out the standard and it gives you kind of a shortened what it is. So this one is to use place value to round to the nearest 10 and 100. Um, again, so if they don't understand this basic place value, they're not going to be able to do the rounding aspect of it. Um, so there's a pretest page, a post test page, which looks exactly the same, except it says post test at the top and not pretest. Um, so just be aware it's there on purpose. Um, and then last um, for each standard is an answer key with a kind of explanation as to why that question was chosen. Um, so it gives you the answers as the teacher and it kind of helps you figure out where um, you need to go from there and why we picked those questions. So again, like I said, there is one for every standard um, and they can be used um, throughout the year. It's not like you only can use it at the beginning of the year or only at the end. Um, what I like to do with my kids is to give them it as we go through the standards. So that way it's not like all the way at the end, we're gonna go through all of it. It's we're gonna progress through it as we learn it throughout the year. Um, so what I'm gonna do is kind of just show you an example of one that was um, done with one of my kiddos and um, talk you through how I'm gonna use that information and where I'm gonna go from there. So 
Um, this is just MBT.1. Um, and again, it's all about rounding to the nearest 10 or 100 um, in relation to place value. So the first question, again, is asking about just can you identify the number from expanded form? Um, the little key here, the circle, question number one is, again, going to be the most basic. So this was correctly identified. They have to fill in and show their work here. Um, a lot of the times, the work is just going to be filling it into the box. Sometimes they'll have to write or do their own thing, especially when it gets to like addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. You want to see their work. Um, and other times, you know, this is going to be sufficient. Then on the second question, um, we're rounding to the nearest 10. And again, they're kind of using a guide here. They were able to correctly round to the nearest 10. Um, didn't show any work on this, but the kids can use this sort of little number line here. Um, if you're teaching a certain strategy in class, you may want them to show their work specifically. Like if you're teaching them um, friendly numbers or whatnot, um, that may be a good thing for you to show their work. Then on the last question, um, it just says for them to round to the nearest 10 and the 100. So again, they rounded the number correctly to the nearest 10, but then to the 100, they rounded the hundreds, but not all the way correctly. So they were able to register that 3460 does in fact round up, but they still left the 60 instead of 3500. So after you have each kid complete the pre-assessment, um, I like to go through with my handy dandy post-its and my answer key. Um, and there are a couple of different ways to do this. I um, find that this is easiest for me. Again, I want to write it out on paper. Um, if there's any kids I know that identified as super high or super low and I just know right off the start, I'll typically write them on a post-it note. Um, I'm still going to use all this data here, but I like to have the little post-its to help me out. So what I, I typically do is I'll take the answer key and I'll just write out in the margins sort of where the kids fell. So if I have a kid named Sam and he only answered the first question correctly, then I would write Sam out to the side um, and then I would just keep going. So with all of my kids, this is Abby, this is Jacob and Carrie, you know, just write it out to the side. Um, so from here, after you have all of your kids kind of grouped, again, you can do this completely differently. Some people like to, I know, use like Google, like some form of online Google Docs and write it all down there. Um, I find it easier to manipulate here. From here, what I will do is I'll go back and look at the um, suggested groups that Toluca has. Now, again, I talked earlier in the video about how you're going to know your kids and you're going to know what they need best, but it's good to have this group suggestions as well. So if you have kids that couldn't answer any of the questions correctly at all, they're going to be your low babies and those definitely need to be in their own little group. Um, I find that those groups should be smaller and hopefully you don't have a large group of kids that are really struggling and can't answer any of the questions. Um, but I typically find that that should be your smallest group and that kind of tells you how low they are and where they need to be. If you have a whole group that's specifically low. The other thing you can do is back up a grade level. Um, I know I had a, quite a few kids that I wanted to give the second grade one to because they were just so off and I really needed a little bit more to figure out where they were in terms of the standards. So I backed up. So that's kind of another thing you can do. Um, so I'm going to look at this and see where my kids fall. So again, if you have your kids that are really low and really high, those are going to kind of be your e most easily identified groups. Your other groups in the middle are going to be a little bit trickier. Um, if you follow the guide that Saluka has exactly, you're going to have kids that answered one correctly, kids one and two, and kids that answered one, two, and three. Um, so that's kind of your three middle groups. Now, you know that there are some kids that don't necessarily do well on one thing, but you know that they're going to be higher or lower. So you have to use kind of your best judgment on that and kind of figure out where you think that they're going to fall. Um, so I'll take all of that information and kind of what I know about my kids from the pre-assessment. Um, and again, this is a pre-assessment, so it should be taught before you even teach the standard. Um, you're going to do the post-assessment after you've done the teaching part, and that's hopefully going to show growth. Or if you don't have any growth, then show you your kids that you really need to hit on. So um, I take all of this and I use that to kind of structure up my groups. 
Um, there are lots of different things that you can do with your groups and that's going to all fall in your classroom and kind of what you like to do. Um, I will typically pull a couple of groups. We have a set intervention time at my school and so that's another time that I can pull groups um, and it gives me a chance to meet with them. Obviously, you're going to want to meet with your really low babies more often than your higher kids um, just because those low friends are the ones that are going to need the most support. Um, but this will kind of help you outline all of that and get that scheduled out. Um, I also am a big fan of writing it all down on a calendar. <laughs> so I'll take my groups and then I will write out like group one, group two, or whatever there, if they have animal names or colors, something along those lines, um, and try and write it out on a scheduled calendar. I find that that helps me make sure I'm not skipping anybody or missing anybody. Um, and I think that that's super helpful. So after you've gone through and made your groups, um, you have these groups to kind of help you throughout the standard. Um, a lot of the times you're going to be teaching a couple of things at the same time, especially with those NBT standards. Um, they kind of tend to blend together. So just be aware of that. Um, it's not always a bad thing to do two of those pre-assessments. You just copy it front and back and give it, do, have them do the whole paper. That way, as you're teaching the standard, as it kind of goes together, um, you can have all that data. Um, so I use these groups. Those are the groups I'm going to meet with. I'll teach through how I would normally teach the standard. Um, so not going to do anything any different. I'm going to use whatever curriculum my district has provided or whatever I'm going to use um, and just teach that normally. Obviously, I'm still going around and I'm still monitoring during my teaching. I'm still watching for kids that are struggling, correcting mistakes as I see them, all of those things that you know to do as a good teacher. Um, and then this is specifically for my groups. So once I'm done with all of that, I've taught the standard, I've met with my groups, I've done all of that, then I'm gonna go back to the post-assessment. And the post-assessment, again, is the same exact thing as the pre-assessment. So it's not gonna look any differently. Um, if we look at the post-assessment for this standard, right, here's the post-assessment pre-assessment. It's the same thing. Um, but what you're going to have your kids do is you're going to have them go through and do it again. Now, what you're looking for here is growth. Okay. And so your kids that already answered all three correctly, they're going to look at you like, Miss Whitney, I just did this. I know all of this. Awesome. Tell them to show their work to prove that they know it. Um, and that's good for them. But you're looking really for your kids that either didn't answer any of those questions correctly or only answered one and two. Um, and your goal, obviously, is to move them up into the next level. Now, on questions like this, um, they may have answered the nearest 10 correctly both times. So, like, again, even if they still got part of number three, you're still looking for that growth. You still want them to do better um, and to move on to the next level. Um, from here, you can do your post-assessment. Um, and then I will go through and look at all those results again. And I'll kind of do the same thing, sometimes even on the same piece of paper where I write their names out to the side, but maybe on the other side. Um, and I'm looking to see if kids moved. So if Sam did better this time, then that's good. And he'll be here now. Abby did the same. Carrie moved up from here. Okay, so you're looking for less kids at the top of your paper, less kids that fall in this one zone and two zone and more kids that fall in the three zone. Um, I'm going to use that post assessment to continue with any other groups that I might need to do. Now, you know that you can't stay stuck on one standard forever, but you can continue to build in that standard as you move forward into new standards. These are building standards. So you're going to start with MBT1 and move forward as you go. So while you're continuing to work and starting to work on the second standard, okay, you can still be meeting with groups on that first standard. You don't have to just say, oh, we're one and done. I finished the post-assessment. These kids are done. We're moving on, right? You can continue to meet with them, and I suggest that you do um, as you move on into the next part. So that's just kind of something else to keep in mind. I think a lot of teachers want to say, oh, well, I did the post assessment and it showed growth and that's awesome. But again, you're looking for continued improvement and that means you're going to have to keep meeting with them over and over. So you can reshape your groups um, if they're not as accurate as they were the first part. Okay, you can continually move kids in and out of groups. I have some kids who will have a click moment and it just totally makes sense. The light bulb goes off bright orange over their head and they're good. Um, and then they can move and that's awesome. You're looking for that moment. That's my favorite thing about teaching is the light bulb moment. Um, so 
watch out for that. Um, just be aware when you're making your groups that they might shift, especially when you get to the post assessment. I'm hoping that they shift. That's your goal is you want them to shift. Um, so from here, um, after you've gone through, you've got your second assessment, you just start the process all back over. Um, you're basically just going to keep doing the same thing over and over. Um, again, if you have kids that are really low or really high, okay, this is another chance for you to kind of go backwards another grade or forwards another grade. Um, I know I had a friend who did super well on everything that I gave her at the beginning of the year, and so I gave her some of the fourth grade stuff. I was just interested to see kind of where she was. Um, these assessments are great for that. They're extremely helpful in giving you your starting point and kind of figuring out where the kids are. Um, again, they're a diagnostic assessment, so their job, their goal, is to help you diagnose and figure out where those kids are. Um, I, I think that it's, it's really important for you to look at the data and important, this is a great way to use data to your advantage in your teaching. Um, so, like I said, they have them for all of the standards. Um, I just went through MBT1 um, with y'all and they go through throughout the year. Um, I know you don't always do the standards in a certain order, um, but fortunately, because it's grouped by standard, not by quarter or by semester, you can jump throughout these and use them wherever you want. Um, a couple of suggestions I have in relation to keeping these organized. I find it easiest to print the whole file out and put it in a binder. Um, the nice thing about that is that you can put tabs in for each group of standards. So if you want all of your MBT and all of your fraction standards and then your geometry, okay, you could do that. Um, if you have a big enough binder, you could even put the results for your kids in that binder and hole punch and put your calendar schedule and it can kind of operate as your data binder. Um, so that's one big suggestion I have. I find that it's easier than trying to dig through the pages online. I know that there were a couple of teachers that talked about how they couldn't administer this online as easily. And I, I think it's hard. Um, and there's definitely some ways to do it. There are some online tools that have annotations available. Um, and so you can assign it and have them annotate. I know that Kami is a tool that I used last year when I was teaching online. Um, and there are some other tools that you can kind of use as your annotation tools. So you can just send it out, assign it to the kids, have them annotate on it, and then you can still use all of that information. Um, but it's, there's, it's definitely possible. So don't let the online factor um, scare you away from this because it's a really amazing resource and um, we've put a lot of time and work into it to hopefully make it awesome for you guys. Um, so just to recap, like I said, they're available first grade all the way through fifth grade for all of the standards. Um, there are a few standards that are combined. It will say at the top, like this one says MD.3 and MD.4. So that's two um, measurement standards and it's kind of in the same. They were similar to where we wanted to put them together. Um, this one's relating to data. I see it more that they're combined on all of the like data standards, the geometry standards. Most of the MBT ones have their own and most all of the fractions have their own. Addition subtraction typically has their own. Um, so you'll just have to look through and again it's clear at the top if it's one single standard or if it's two standards. Um, so it's all standards, summer combined, first grade through fifth grade um, assessments. They are available on markersandminions.com or on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, so you can find them there and read the product descriptions. There's a little bit more information and specifics laid out in there. Um, again, it's an amazing resource and something that I really think is powerful and helpful when you're working to make groups with your kids, especially if you don't know where to start. Um, this is a great way to do that. So um, I hope that was helpful for you and that you gained a little bit of information about this product and why I love it and it's super awesome. Um, and hopefully it kind of gives you a place to jumpstart, grab your post-its, print out your assessments, um, and you can go ahead and rock and roll with your kids. They're a great thing for you to use. Um, so again, my name is Heather. I enjoyed spending some time with y'all today. Um, tell me in the comments what you think about these. I love to hear how you guys um, are using them and what you think of them. Um, if you have any suggestions or anything that would help make it easier for you, we want to hear that. We want this to be a good resource for you. Um, and so we hope that you'll kind of tell us how we're doing and how we can help you out. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off. If you have any questions, Please, please, please check in with me in the comments. Um, I'll be watching all of that. And I um, hope to see you guys around on Facebook. So that's all I've got for you guys. Thanks so much. And uh, have a good evening. <laughs>